So there's been, I know we're going to jump into the outro and stuff, but I don't know if you guys know about these. There's been some other, there's been a lot of Twitter beefs this week, back okay. and forth, but there's a couple that you may not have seen. All right. And uh, I know we've talked before about Cody Hall on the show having some Twitter back and forth with uh, with Shane Helms, but did you see uh, his back and forth with Joey Janela? Who's? Cody Hall. Cody Hall did back and forth with Joey. No, I did not see this. Let's, let's get to this. So... Uh, Joey Janela simply tweeting about, you know, travel tweets. I was supposed to land at 6 a.m., landed at like 11.30, now waiting for a train to take me to another train, and I'll be home in about two hours. Everyone leave me alone today. Cody Hall responds, post for attention, says leave me alone. Joey Janela responds, dude, you're 28, 6, 9, and the son of Scott Hall, and you're not signed anywhere, nor do you get any notable independent dates. Get your fucking act together, Chico. <laughs> that was it? Yeah, yeah, but... I thought that there was, was no response to that. No, no. Cody got zing there. And then there's actually a deleted tweet, but uh, of course the wrestling website screenshot it and, and have it. As I was trying to say to Kevin, w- what's going on with AEW uh, and WWE slash Evolve is their next pay-per-view is in uh, July. Okay, and it's... Uh, well, actually, I think it's also on Bleacher Report Live, so it's not a pay-per-view, but the next major event. It's called Fight for the Fallen, AEW Fight for the Fallen, and the idea was... Uh, they're having it in Jacksonville, and it's going to be all the proceeds go to the victims of you know mass shootings, hence the name Fight for the Fallen. Well, to counter-program that, WWE is putting Evolve Live on the network for the first time for their their big anniversary show. I think it features Riddle, maybe Adam Cole. So uh, Kenny Omega tweets, If lining your pockets with blood money is okay, then what's wrong with trying to undermine a charity show for the victims of gun violence? I hear that healthy competition is supposed to be a good thing, and yet I can't help but feel like I'm going to be sick. Uh, I've said my piece, and it opened the door to a very toxic environment. It wasn't a message to fans or the boys, just decision makers. I wish everyone wrestling on any show that day, that day, all the best. That is all. So, there you have it. Kenny not happy with them counter programming a charity show. You know, kind of looking at it as as dirty business, I guess. Whatever. <laughs> I mean, there, there's so much, bro. And these, here's the thing: is like these these guys are all on Twitter and everything, and like. I think the wrestling fan base is making them feel like they're more important than they are, but it's not like, you know, like the, here's the funniest thing. Like Seth Rollins is tweeting how great he is, uh, like a few weeks removed. Like he's a top guy in their show tweeting how great he thinks he is and what a great wrestler he is. Like, like a two weeks removed from their lowest ratings in the history of the company. Right. I'm like, that's not, you know what I'm saying? It's like the observers are watching this stuff and they're going like, what, what, what are you guys doing here? I think you know, like, it's all such petty nonsense, you know, it's just, it's, 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 it's ridiculous. And there's a fine line in between, you know, between being confident and, and being, a, you know, a cheerleader for your company, so to speak, and kind of just coming across as an asshole, and, he, and, and a kiss-ass, too. Like, I, his tweets aren't good looks, even for his fans and WWE fans. He just looks, I don't think it's, it's getting the reaction that he thought it would, you know. And, what do you Bro, think, he's, in the tweet that he said, because I... I actually popped in one where I think Wade Keller was kind of trying to put him in his place, and then he buried Wade. Yeah. And uh, and I just think Wade's very presumptuous, so I like when he gets buried. And um, so uh, he said something like, uh, sit down, Junior, or pats him on the head, some yeah. bullshit like that. Yeah. But I think that the one that I read was uh, where, where he, he was basically saying, I'm getting tired of everybody shitting on our product when I – you know, and so I'm going to speak up for it or something like that. And of course, you know, if you're tired of people t- talking shit about your product and you're a top guy, you have every right to say that. But, um, uh, um, you know, I think he did get more heat than, than he expected from that. Yeah. And he started going back and forth with Will Ospreay, you know, basically saying, you know, there's not a, there's not a man alive that can do what I do as consistently and things like that. Seth Rollins. No, 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 no. He was basically, uh, the, the thing with Osprey, he would say, "Hey, we already we have a better version of you here." It's referring to Ricochet, right? But that was his yeah. response to when Rollins said, "There's not a man alive that can do what I do consistently and better and stuff." And Osprey just tweeted back, "Hey, I'm alive." And right. then Rollins took a shot at him. We already have a better version of you here, and he's the new U.S. champion, Ricochet, yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, neither of those guys have ever drawn a dime. So it's well, he's all, he's also gone on. Uh, I believe it was a Sports Illustrated related radio show or podcast. And kind of took shots at Moxley, which was surprising to some people, and saying he if, if he couldn't hack it here, he took his ball and went home. And a lot of the WWE corporate speak when a guy leaves, you know, and, and that to me it's why mm-hmm. it doesn't it doesn't doesn't come across as genuine 
or his opinions when I've heard Vince say the same things in interviews or whatever. You know what I mean? They might have told him, hey, man, defend the fucking company. You're making so many millions a year. Or he might have just said, fuck it. I, I need to speak up, you know, so you don't, you don't know. Yeah. And I mean, it is his he is the flag bearer right now. He's the champion. He's the he's the top guy on, on the Raw show, at least main event in the pay-per-views. And I guess it is his job, right? Well, you know, when you're the top guy, sometimes you got to go out there and be a leader and speak up for your company when they're getting shitted in the press. And that's what he felt he had to do. You know what I'm saying? 